Hi, in this video, we're looking at atomic mass. So I want to start with this. We've got a donut here, which is uh, fake, but still looks pretty good, doesn't it? It'd be great with some Starbucks or Wegmans coffee. Um, and let's say I have 10 different donut shops and they're all selling the same donut. And the donut costs a little expensive for a donut, but let's say nine of the 10 shops are selling it for a dollar each. But the 10th shop, this one here, is selling it for twice that, selling it for $2. And that could be because it's in a better location or maybe it's, I don't know, in a ritzier area. Um, and so they're able to charge more and customers are just as willing to pay $2 as they are to pay $1 at the other nine locations. Well, if I asked you what's the average price of the donut across all 10 of these shops, it's tempting to say $1.50. And that's because if we take a dollar and we average it with two dollars, we get right in between them one dollar and fifty cents. The problem, though, is that 90 percent of the shops are charging a dollar and only 10 percent is charging two dollars. So it's a little uh, misleading to say that the average is a dollar fifty. The average is much closer to just a dollar. And so the way to determine this is actually to take the percentages and multiply them by the price. And so for 90% of $1, that's 90 cents. 10% of $2 is 20 cents. Add these together, and there's your actual average price. It's $1.10, and that makes much more sense because more of the shops are charging a dollar. So the average should be closer to a dollar. Well, what we just did here is called a weighted average. And a weighted average is an average in which each value is multiplied by a weight, a percentage, before summing to a single average value. Now just taking a flat average is assuming that every single value in your average has the same weight. But in many cases, we don't have a flat average. We need to do a weighted average. Let me give you another example. Course grades are like this. In our class, tests are weighted more heavily than quizzes, and both of those categories are weighted more heavily than homework. So let's say you got an 80% on the test, a 70% on a quiz, and a 60% on a homework. If you just did the flat average of these three scores, you'd end up with a 70%. But getting an 80% on a test should mean more than getting a 60% on a homework. And so if I said that tests count for half of your grade, quizzes count for 30%, and homework counts for 20%, well then your overall grade is going to be a little bit closer to that 80% test grade than it is to that 60% homework grade. So even our course averages are weighted averages. When we go to figure out the atomic mass of an element in the periodic table, for example, boron's got an atomic mass of 10.81, we're talking about the weighted average of all of the isotopes of boron found on Earth. And this is true for boron. About 80% of the isotopes of boron on Earth are boron-11, and only 20% are boron-10. So the average atomic mass for boron isn't 10.5, it's 10.81 because it's, uh, it's a weighted average. It's, there's more boron-11 than there is boron-10. This is called the natural abundance, and a natural abundance is the amount of a given isotope found naturally here on Earth. Um, it's always expressed as a percentage, uh, and it helps us determine what the atomic mass for elements are here on planet Earth. So if I wanted to go back and figure out what the atomic mass for boron was, I'd be taking these percentages, 80 and 20, and I'd be multiplying them by their mass, 11 and 10. So 80% of 11 is 8.8, 20% of 10 is 2, and then I just add these together to get 10.8 AMU. And for this, we're in full disclosure, kind of ignoring significant figures for now. So let's try some of these sample problems, and then I'll show you how the sig figs work out for these. Uh, this says calculate the atomic mass of chlorine using the data below. So I've got chlorine 35. Um, it's giving me a more specific mass here, and I just want to use this. I don't really want to use the 35 unless that's all I have. Remember, protons and neutrons aren't 1 AMU. They're slightly more than that. So you're going to have a more specific mass here, and that's the one you should use when trying to determine the overall atomic mass. And then they're giving us this. These percentages are the abundances. So the abundance 
for chlorine 35 is 75.78 percent the abundance for chlorine 37 is 24.22 percent so before i even start this my average atomic mass is going to be located a little bit closer to 35 than it is to 37 because three quarters of the chlorine that's here on earth is chlorine 35. so let's uh, set up how we would do this i take the mass 34.968 and I'm going to multiply this by 75.78%. It's important that that percent is there because we're really doing this 75.78 divided by 100. Um, so let me do this here. Hang on, I need my calculator. Okay, I'm back. I got it. 34.968 times 75.78%. That gives me uh, 26.4988. And let's think about sig figs. I'm multiplying, so I want to look at significant figures. This one's got five in it, and this one has four. So I want to round this number to four significant figures. 26.50, 26.50. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same process for the other isotope here. 36.966 times 24.22%. Okay, again, I want four sig figs, so 8.953, 8.953. Now I wanna take this number here and this number here and add them together. So here I go, 26.50 plus 8.953. Now time out for a second. I'm adding, so that means I have to look at decimal places. I've got two decimal places here and three there. So I want two in my final answer. So here I go, 26.5 plus 8.953. I want 35.45. And then finish that off with a unit, atomic mass unit, or AMU. There it is. Okay, that's the process in a nutshell. It really doesn't change all that much unless, of course, you have more than two isotopes. So let's look at an example there. This one says calculate the atomic mass of magnesium using the data below. And we've got three isotopes here. That's really no different. Um, we still have these more specific masses, so we're going to use those. And then we have these abundances here. Now, think about this for a second. Of these three isotopes, 24, 25, and 26, given these abundances here, 79, 10, and 11, which is the atomic mass going to be closest to? The answer is really going to be magnesium 24 because almost 80% of all the magnesium that exists on the planet is magnesium 24. So at the end of these problems, you can kind of do a little logic check. Does it make sense that my answer is closest to 24? So let's go ahead and calculate this and we'll see if that's uh, true. Magnesium 24 has got a real mass of 23.985. So I'm gonna multiply this by 78.99%. 78.99%. And I want four significant figures, so 18.95. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the other two isotopes. So 24.986 times 10.00%. Don't forget to factor in this percentage here. Some people will put the percent button in, and that's fine. Um, other people don't have it. Like, I don't have it, so I have to divide by 100. So for this one here, also four significant figures, I've got 2.4... Nine, nine, and then the last one, 25.983 times 11.01%, 25.983 times 11.01%, 2.861, 2 2.861. Now I wanna add these three isotopes together, but it's, it's at this stage that I'm looking at decimal places. I've got two here, three, three. So I want two decimal places in my final answer. So I go and type in 18.95 plus 2.499 plus 
perfect. My calculator actually gives me uh, two decimal places because that's just what happens to be the number. 24.31 and then AMU is my unit. And that's it. Not too bad, right? It's the same process every time. And you might be thinking at this point, well, can't we just look at the periodic table and have it tell us what the atomic mass is? Sure, but it's also a good idea to know how did we get these numbers? Now you know. Thanks.